popping shit at the palace. Niggas be broke and be solving, but still talking shit like they violent. Niggas is broke. In a trade, teams always try to get equal value for what they're giving up. If you're going to give up, let's say, Anthony Davis, and his value is equivalent to a 5, theoretically you'd want to get in return a package that's equivalent to a 5. So let's say you trade one player that's worth a 3 and two players that are worth 1. The total value would be 5 and that would be a fair trade for both sides. And that's how theoretically trades are structured and what both sides aim for. But this isn't the case in the real world. There are many other variables that go into trades. If you're trading a guy like Josh Jackson, who's around a 2 right now, after years in development, he may become a guy that's worth around a 4 or a 5. I don't even know if y'all get what I'm saying, but to conclude, all I'm trying to say is for today's video, we're going to look at 10 players who got better after they were traded, and I'm doing this in collaboration with my man MDJ. MDJ said what's good, bro. Thanks, Bezos. What's up, guys? My name is Mark, aka MDJ. If you don't know who I am, I'm just another guy that watches basketball, way too much basketball, and makes NBA videos as well. Today, I'm teaming up with Bezos to bring you guys 10 players who got better after getting traded. Enjoy. Alex English. Most people don't really know about Alex English, nonetheless the fact that he was traded. Alex English came into the league as a second round draft pick to the Milwaukee Bucks. He wasn't really a star at first, not averaging 10 points his first two years in the league. Then he signed to the Indiana Pacers as a free agent, where he played pretty solid, averaging 16 points and 8 rebounds. And in his second year in Indiana, he was traded in the middle of the season for one George McGinnis. Now this is a perfect example of getting equal trade value initially, but the balance being tipped because of development. Before the trade, the Pacers were trading a guy in Alex English who averaged 15 points, 7 rebounds, and 3 assists for a guy in McGinnis who was averaging 15 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists, and a steal and a guy who was an all-star the year before. But little did we know that in Denver, Alex English would average only less than 20 points once in his 11 years there and be an eight-time all-star and be a 25 plus points per game score in eight out of those 11 years. Chauncey Billups. Chauncey Billups' career in a nutshell is a story of how a player recovered from early struggles. As the third pick in the draft, many people had high expectations for Billups, but upon arriving in Boston as a rookie, Billups immediately clashed with the head coach and got traded to the Raptors. From that point on, he would then get traded to the Nuggets and the Magic in the same season, being tossed around as a salary filler more so than an actual player. He then signed with the Timberwolves, and at this point in time, many people had written him off as a bust. But under the tutelage of Kevin Garnett and fellow point guard Terrell Brandon, Billups would learn what it truly means to be an effective player in the NBA. In 2002, he signed with the Detroit Pistons, where his tenacious defense would be part of the Pistons' defensive identity while being the primary playmaker for their offense. In the 2004 NBA Finals, the Pistons would upset the Super Team Lakers, led by none other than Chauncey Billups, who took home the Finals MVP award. This also brings up a what-if scenario that no one really talks about, which is, what if the Celtics kept him and together they figured it out? Would Chauncey Billups have helped Paul Pierce contend for a championship before they ever got Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett? We will never know. Yusuf Nurkic. Now just a disclaimer, we never said this was an all-time list. These are just 10 players who got better after being traded. And I just wanted to bring someone from the modern era into this. So Nurkic was drafted by the Nuggets in 2014. And in his first two seasons, he averaged 7 points, 6 rebounds on 44% shooting from the field and couldn't shoot the three. In his third year, he showed barely any improvement. And in some areas, he went down. So the Nuggets decided to trade Nurkic and their first round draft pick who ended up being Harry Giles to the Trailblazers for Mason Plumley. And in those 20 games, Nurkic immediately showed his impact and skill and he averaged 15 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists, a steal and 2 blocks on 50% shooting from the field. And in those 20 games in 2017, which was last season, the Trailblazers went 14 and 6 
and he was probably the biggest reason as to why the Trailblazers made the 8th seed. It was just a shame that he was injured 2 weeks before the playoffs and who knows what kind of impact he would have made in the playoffs. Probably not that much because they faced the Warriors. Ben Wallace. Fun fact, Ben Wallace is a 4 time All Star and a 4 time Defensive Player of the Year. Also fun fact, he went undrafted. The first team to pick him up were the Wizards who kept him for 3 years but had no success, so they traded him to the Magic who had him for a year and also had no success, who then traded him to the Pistons in exchange for Grant Hill. At the time, people thought this was an absolutely absurd trade in favor of the Magic, but in hindsight, it was quite the opposite. Grant Hill would go on to be hampered by injuries and never return to being the star that he was in his first couple years, while Ben Wallace would establish the Pistons defensive culture that eventually won them the championship in 2004. The same guy who every NBA team passed on in the draft, the same guy that almost went to Italy to play basketball, the same guy who teams traded away as an average backup center would go on to cement himself as one of, if not the best defender of his era and have his jersey retired by Detroit. Moses Malone. So I know Moses was traded from the Rockets to the 76ers and that was probably the most notable trade of his career and I know he didn't really get better in those years he was basically the same player he was from the Rockets as he was on the 76ers but I want to look at the trade that got him to Houston in the first place. So in 1976 in his first year in the NBA after two games Moses Malone was traded from the Buffalo Braves to the Houston Rockets for two first round draft picks. What makes this weird is the fact that it wasn't like he was some unproven talent. It wasn't like he was averaging bad stats. In fact, he hasn't even played a game. In fact, he played his first two years of professional basketball in the ABA where he averaged 17 points and 13 rebounds and was an all-star his first year in his time there. So I find it weird that he was even traded especially after two games. And in Houston, he'd become a perennial all-star, one of the greatest centers of all time, a two-time MVP averaging 26 points and 15 rebounds in his time there. And also, he led them to the finals in 1986, which was pretty amazing. Robert Parrish. Parrish was drafted by the Golden State Warriors in 1976, and by his third year in the league, he was already putting up very respectable numbers. However, in his fourth season, he was dealt to the Celtics, which would forever change his career and legacy. Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Robert Parrish would go on to form one of the greatest big threes in NBA history, winning three championships in their tenure together. Upon being traded to Boston, Parrish's per game numbers improved as well as his efficiency. Funny enough, it's the exact opposite from Harden. Harden benefited from leaving a team where he was the third option and went to a team where he was the man. Parrish on the other hand was the leading scorer of a 24-58 Warriors team, but then got traded to the Celtics where he was the third option which not only gave him opportunities to win championships but also improved his overall individual game. Parrish would go on to have a very successful career that saw him play 21 seasons and basically never get injured which made him the all-time leader in total NBA games played as well as top 10 in rebounding and blocks. Chris Webber. For a guy who was drafted first overall in this draft and produced all-star numbers out of the gate, C. Webb was a journeyman, which I find pretty weird. So in 1994, C. Webb was traded for Penny Hardaway on draft day, we all know that. But even after averaging 18 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 blocks his rookie year for the Warriors, he was traded to the Bullets for Tom Gugliotta and three first round draft picks that all ended up being scrubs except for Vince Carter. But even they traded VC for Antoine Jameson. And in Washington too, he was extremely good, averaging 21 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, nearly 2 steals and 2 blocks. But even after that, he was still traded to the Kings for Mitch Richmond and Otis Thorpe. And this is a trade I really want to count on this list, his trade to the Sacramento Kings, because this was really where C. Webb made a name for himself. In his time in Sacramento, he got even better. And I know that sounds crazy after the stats of his name, but in Sacramento, he averaged 24 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists, a steal and a half, and a block and a half, and being the heart and soul of those Kings teams that nearly beat the Lakers with Shaq and Kobe if it wasn't for an alleged rigging of the series. Jason Kidd. 
The case of Jason Kidd getting traded is one of the most fascinating stories that many NBA fans have forgotten or just don't know about. If you don't know the story of the Mavericks 3 Js, it was the nickname given to their trio of Jim Jackson, Jamal Mashburn, and Jason Kidd in the mid-90s. They were drafted in 1992, 93, and 94 respectively, and all three within their first couple years in the league proved to be really, really good players. But due to their personal issues which included fighting over singer Tony Braxton as well as organizational dysfunction, the Mavericks ended up disbanding them in 1997. And they sent Jason Kidd to the Phoenix Suns. 10 years later, Jason Kidd would return to Dallas and eventually win a ring in 2011 and by the end of his career had established himself as one of the greatest point guards of all time. 10 time All-Star, 5 time All-NBA selection, 8 time All-NBA defensive team selection and now he's coaching the Milwaukee Bucks. Teaching the wisdom he accumulated as an oversized point guard to an even more gifted athlete with point guard skills known as Giannis Antetokounmpo. Kyle Lowry. So Kyle Lowry for a majority of his career was just an average point guard. He played his first four years playing off the bench, averaging stats that don't really pop out the screen, averaging nine points, four assists on 42% shooting from the field. You know, he was an average point guard. And in his last two years before being traded where he did start, Again, he was still a pretty average point guard, but he did show some improvement. He averaged 14 points, 6.5 assists, 4 rebounds, but still on an inefficient 42% from the field. And in the offseason of 2012, Lowry was traded to the Raptors for Gary Forbes and a first round draft pick. And this is the part where you'd expect me to say he got better. Not yet. In his first year, if anything, he got worse. He started less games, played less minutes, and the only stat that went up for Lowry was rebounding at 4.7. It was the second year in Toronto where Lowry took off and never looked back. In his second year, Lowry averaged 18 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds, and 1.5 steals, and from then on, he would become the player we know today. And since then, Lowry has become the leader of the Toronto Raptors alongside DeMar DeRozan, leading them to one conference finals appearance and becoming one of the best point guards in the league, averaging around 21.7 rebounds and 5 assists the last two years. James Harden In what will probably end up as one of the worst trades in NBA history, the Oklahoma City Thunder traded Harden to the Rockets after he averaged 17-4-4 coming off the bench and winning 6th man of the year. At the time of this trade, people knew that Harden was good, but not that many people knew that he was this good. Some had questions about how he would fare as the number one option. Some thought he only looked good because he was going up against second units. Some used his poor performance in the 2012 finals to say that he doesn't have the mental makeup of a superstar. It's safe to say Harden has quieted those concerns. In his five seasons with Houston so far, he's been runner-up MVP twice and he's led his team to the conference finals all while playing 82 games almost every season and putting up all around incredible numbers. And that concludes this video. Before we go, I just wanted to thank my guy MDJ again for helping me out with this video and collabing with me. Again, check his channel out and subscribe. He's definitely on the rise and one of the best I know in the game right now. And while you're there, check out our other collab where we talk about four of the greatest debates of all time. I think you guys are really going to enjoy that video as well. But with that being said, I am out. Peace.